while I was still in um, an Air Force camp waiting demobilization, I wrote to uh, um, the Dean of Architecture at Sydney University, who was Professor Leslie Wilkinson, mm. and uh, asked him if, if uh, I had the uh, secondary school qualifications uh, uh, for admission to the uh, architecture course. And, uh, um, I got a nice reply written in longhand um, from Professor Wilkinson saying, yes, uh, sure, we'll keep a place for you. Um, no, it was, it was dead easy. It was a very big intake, I believe, of architects that year. Yes, it was. Mm. I think uh, um, something very close to 100 yes. enrolled. Um, by the end of the first year, that had dropped to about 75. Not I think, surprising. I think about 60 graduated. Yes. <laughs> but that was the biggest uh, intake the uni university had ever had up to that time. Lloyd Rees um, did the course uh, Architectural History and uh, he also uh, taught uh, um, freehand drawing and uh, art have enjoyed general. that. Mm. So we had um, what you might call life classes where uh, um, one of us posed and the rest of us uh, drew, drew it and Lloyd Rees uh, looked over our shoulders and told us where we were going wrong. And we'd go out to, into the field, go and sit in the um, courtyard and uh, draw buildings. Um, <clears throat> Leslie Wilkinson had a motto, he said, uh, uh, you should uh, be continually drawing. Never a day without a sketch, he said. Uh, Sid Anker was uh, making a name for himself um, as an avant-garde architect, uh -huh. uh, proponent of the international style. And uh, uh, when I was in third year, I met Sid Anker at, at a party being held by uh, people who turned out to be mutual friends. So uh, mm. um, I quickly... Uh, seized the opportunity and uh, uh, got Sid to agree to let me uh, come and work in his office in the, uh, the two terms of the last two years of the course where um, architecture students were expected, well, had to uh, go and get practical experience in architects' offices. And uh, uh, his office consisted of one room, 14 feet square, yes. uh, and in that one room uh, after I joined the firm, or after I was allowed to come in and uh, uh, get work experience in the firm, um, there was Sid Anker, there was Stuart Murray, there was me, um, and there was another architect whose name escaped me at the moment, running a quite separate one-man practice. Incredible. It was held in there, let me see. <laughs> I did drafting. I uh, did... Uh, I drafted working drawings for uh, Sid Anker's houses, and uh, what else? Uh, main, mainly that, there was quite enough of that to do. Uh, I graduated with uh, first class honours. Yes. Uh, I, uh, um, I certainly did get the university medal, mm -hmm. and uh, I also got a travelling scholarship by a Hadley. And what did that entail? Uh, well, um, it gave you... Um, Five, five hundred, yes, five hundred pounds, I think it was, um, to um, take yourself overseas um, and uh, pursue a certain, uh, um, you were invited to choose a field of study and um, you were supposed to uh, pursue that field overseas, didn't the uh, terms of the um, award didn't say where you had to go, it just had to be overseas. I got a job in the London County Council, um, which had uh, quite a big architects department in those days. Yes. Um, and uh, I worked there, um, I suppose I was there for about a year, mm -hmm. um, took a, a couple of weeks off and uh, toured parts of the continent. Um, I'd already become uh, imbued with the idea of uh, um, <clears throat> the international style architecture. Sid Anker was a very uh, strong proponent of this uh, um, the style which uh, meant uh, having uh, uh, 
no ornament and uh, sticking to uh, uh, very usually either uh, everything was either painted white or it was painted black and, uh, uh, there were walls of glass and uh, flat roofs and you won your own prize the Silman Prize I think in, that was a few years later in 59 wasn't it? Yes that okay. was for um, a house in Cronulla and is the house still there? I am told that uh, uh, there is something there that probably uh, uh, includes some parts of the original house that I designed. But mm. uh, I've also been warned not to go and have a look because you'll be very disappointed, I've been told. Must be hard to to see something changed dramatically that you spent so much time on. Oh, yes. Mm. Yes, it's a, it's a hard lesson to learn. That, uh, um, it's a way of being told that uh, something that you thought highly of was not being thought highly of by other people. Mm -hmm. And what about your own house here? You said it was, you came here I think in 1950? Yes, I think it must have been 1950 that we came here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, what was here on the site was uh, a spec builder's house of about 12 squares. Um, it was uh, one of a whole series of houses around this uh, uh, immediate neighbourhood. And who was the builder? Um, the builder's name was Green. Ah, oh, yes, I've um, heard of him. And uh, um, Green, I think a subdivision of uh, North Sydney Council is, is named Green Sub, uh, not far from here. But uh, uh, Green's houses, once you'd uh, uh, seen one of them, you would easily be able to pick out uh, uh, all the others because they, they had the same uh, restricted uh, palette mm. of uh, details uh -huh. and right from the plan up and they were well built little houses I must say. I believe there are still quite a number of them around Camaray, probably unaltered. Yes, I, I know of several that appear from the outside to be unaltered. But you've done a lot of work on this one. Oh yes, well uh, I was uh, an enthusiastic young architect uh, about to show the world how everything should be done. <laughs> and here I was buying myself into uh, a little spec builder's house uh, with a dunny out the back. Well, it was a place to live, but uh, uh, what we were going to do when we came back from uh, our uh, uh, overseas uh, travelling scholarship was to uh, uh, sell this uh, funny little house and uh, buy a block of land and build the house to beat all houses. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, that didn't happen, I'm glad to say. Mm. Um, instead of um, getting out of the funny little house, we set about uh, accommodating ourselves to it and accommodating it to ourselves and uh, uh, pulling and pushing and changing and taking things out and putting things back in until uh, uh, what we have now is... Uh, uh, of the original structure, only one window remains. Really? <laughs> yes. Uh, That's a heritage item then, that one window. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will be. Um, in future times, nobody will be allowed to touch that one. <laughs> yes, um, and the further and further I, uh, um, I went in um, um, this uh, adding on and changing repairing and so on, uh, the more I found myself being committed to uh, just staying on in this place and uh, uh, altering it to suit our lifestyle and uh, that's what I've, I've done.